Welcome back. And now for the news in detail, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan has inaugurated the Kartarpur Corridor to facilitate Sikh pilgrims from India and around the world. Thousands of Sikhs from different parts of the world, including India, attended the inauguration ceremony. Addressing the ceremony in eastern Narawal district, Khan said the border's opening is a historic event for millions of Sikhs. He congratulated the Sikh community on their spiritual leader Baba Guru Nanak's 550th birthday. He said the philosophy of Guru Nanak revolves around humanity. All the messengers of Allah preached about two things, justice and humanity. Teaching of Guru Nanak Dev Ji also packs around these two things. All the saints talk about unifying the people. They don't talk about dividing the masses. Prime Minister Khan asked the Indian government to lift curfew in occupied Kashmir. He said the Kashmiri conflict is not the issue of land, rather it's a matter of humanity. Kashmiris are being treated like animals. Their right to self-determination granted by the UN has been snatched. Peace cannot be established in such situation. If Indian Prime Minister Modi is listening to me, I want to tell him justice is precursor to peace. Former Indian cricketer turned politician Najwot Singh Sidhu thanked Prime Minister Khan for taking the initiative of the Kartarpur Corridor. Sikhs from all over the world made a historic pilgrimage to Pakistan. They crossed through the Kartarpur border to visit one of their religion's holiest sites in eastern Narawal district. More in this report. The historic Kartarpur corridor to one of Sikhism's holiest shrine is now open. This allows Indian pilgrims rare visa-free access to the site in Pakistan. This comes days before the 550th anniversary of the birth of Sikhism's founder, Guru Nanak. I'm really happy to be here and um, I thank everyone, the authorities. Being here right at the doorstep, it's overwhelming. Getting this chance after, for, it's once in a lifetime, I believe. Officials say the corridor can accommodate up to 5,000 pilgrims per day, with up to 10,000 able to visit the shrine every day. Pakistani authorities have made special arrangements for their stay. We've been uh, here for nearly uh, 10 days now. Uh, we've been doing Yatra uh, all across Pakistan uh, to different Gurdwaras and the uh, and it's been beautiful. Uh, it's been overwhelming, uh, very, very nice. Uh, the whole organization has been, has been great. The shrine complex has been upgraded for the accommodation of more pilgrims. New facilities include a courtyard, museum, library, an immigration center, and an embankment to protect the shrine from floods. The United Nations has welcomed the opening of the Kartarpur corridor. It said the move will increase sense of interreligious harmony. Sikh community from all over the world thanked Pakistan for specially opening the Kartarpur corridor and saving them from all the rigmarole of visa process. Kiran Bhatt, Indus News, Kartarpur, Sahib. The Indian Supreme Court in its Ayodhya case of verdict has handed the disputed Babri Mosque land to the Hindus. In a unanimous decision, the top court said the Indian government will form a trust for the construction of a temple. More in this report. The long-awaited verdict of disputed Babri Mosque has been announced. Hindu fanatics destroyed Babri Mosque in Ayodhya, Uttar Pradesh in 1992, starting riots which claimed 2,000 mostly Muslims' lives. In today's ruling, a five-judge bench ordered the Indian government to form the scheme and rules for working off the trust. The bench ruled the trust will oversee the construction of Hindu temple at the disputed land. The disputed area has been given to the Hindu side. The Supreme Court has told the central government to set up a trust under Section 6 and 7 of Ayodhya Acquisition Act and to make full arrangements for the management. The top court has ordered to give five-acre land to Muslims at an alternative place in Ayodhya for mosque. Expressing his reservation, Indian Sunni Waqf Board advocate Zafar Yab Jilani said he and his client are not satisfied with the verdict. We have will go through it fully, then we will decide what future course of action will be ours. That is, detailed, detailed comments cannot be made just now. 
but you can say that the judgment is uh, there are several contradictions in the judgment and there are some incorrect findings also the indian top court has announced the verdict on the same day when pakistan opened kartarpur corridor for sikh pilgrims Reacting on the Supreme Court's verdict in the Ayodhya case, All India Majlis e Ittehad ul Muslimin President Asaduddin Awaisi says the judgment is a victory of faith over facts. Talking to media in Southern City of Hyderabad, Awaisi said he is not satisfied with the decision. He said the Supreme Court has allowed the same people to build a temple who demolished the mosque in 1992. Muslims are weak and they have been discriminated against and no one can deny this this is as true as the rising of the sun but despite all these weaknesses the muslims of india are not so incapable that they cannot afford 5 acres of land for the construction of the house of allah in uttar pradesh Pakistan's foreign minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi has called Ayodhya verdict insensitive for Indian Muslims in its verdict Indian Supreme Court handed the land of Babri mosque to Hindus caving in Hindutva pressure in a statement Qureshi said India chose to announce the verdict on this joyous day of six at opening of Kartarpur corridor the foreign minister said ruling party Bharatiya Janata Party's Hindutva ideology is the pillar behind its political rise Kureshi said Gandhi's India has been buried under the Hindutva ideology of RSS. Iraq's Prime Minister Adil Abdul Mahdi says he will announce new electoral reforms in coming few days. In a statement, PM Mahdi called for protesters to allow the country to return to normalcy. He said political parties made mistakes in the past 16 years. Meanwhile, security forces are trying to push anti-government protesters back from several major bridges in Baghdad. Over 280 people have been killed since protests against unemployment and corruption began last month. Demonstrators are demanding the current ruling elite to step down. The United States has branded Iran's treatment of an International Atomic Energy Agency inspector as unwarranted intimidation. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said Washington supports the IAEA's monitoring activities in Iran. Pompeo said the U.S. was alarmed by Tehran's lack of cooperation as IAEA should conduct its work unimpeded. Tehran said authorities found contamination in the lavatory and on inspector's handbag during a house search. Iran said IAEA officials were present for all the searches. The UN nuclear body has not publicly commented on the incident with the inspector so far. Earlier, Iran cancelled a UN inspector's accreditation after an alarm was set off at Natanz atomic facility last week. The United Nations says the death of former Egyptian president Mohamed Morsi looks like an arbitrary killing at the hands of the state. The UN Human Rights Panel said the former president was held in brutal conditions that contributed to his death. UN High Commissioner for Human Rights said Egypt's first democratically elected president was placed in solitary confinement 23 hours a day. It said Morsi was forced to sleep on a concrete floor with only one or two blankets for protection. The UN said authorities denied any help to Morsi who was suffering from health problems. The UN has warned thousands of other detainees are also at severe risk due to the ongoing brutal conditions in the prisons. Morsi died on June 17th this year while being trialed for charges which were allegedly politically motivated. Turkey's interior minister Suleiman Soylu says Ankara will start extraditing captured ISIS terrorists to their home countries from Monday. Speaking at a ceremony in Ankara, he said Turkey has told European countries that their citizens will be sent back. Turkey has nearly 1200 foreign members of ISIS in custody and has captured 287 during its recent operation in northern Syria. Ankara has repeatedly criticized western countries for refusing to repatriate their citizens who joined ISIS in Syria and Iraq. Some of the countries have stripped the citizenship of ISIS members. However, it remains unclear whether Turkey will be able to repatriate those who have lost their citizenship. 
Thousands of high school students across Lebanon skipped classes for a third day in a row to carry on the country's anti-graft movement. They are demanding a complete revamp of the political system. The country has been gripped by massive protests since the 17th of October when the government proposed a social media tax. Prime Minister Saad al-Hariri stepped down last month to come the protesters, but it's too little too late. The World Bank has also urged Lebanon to form a new government quickly. U.S. President Donald Trump says he will not remove all the existing tariffs on China as part of a deal to dissolve the trade war. Speaking to reporters at the White House, Trump said the initial deal will be signed in the U.S. The president further said China wanted to make a deal more than he did. Trump went on to say that the tariffs were generating billions of dollars for U.S. coffers. Earlier, officials from both the countries agreed to roll back tariffs on each other's goods if a trade deal is reached. North Korea says the U.S. is running out of time to advance deadlocked bilateral talks. Pyongyang urged uh, Washington to reciprocate while dismissing U.S. sanctions as an unacceptable insult. Head of North American Department of North Korea's Foreign Ministry, Josh Rolso, said Pyongyang was ready to reopen dialogue. Speaking at Moscow Non-Proliferation Conference, Joe said Pyongyang was interested in tangible results. We've given the United States quite a lot of time and we're waiting for an answer before the end of the year, some kind of a result. We hope that everything will develop in a positive way. But I must say that the window of opportunity closes every day. White House is yet to respond to the latest comments from North Korea. Now moving on to Hong Kong, where police have arrested three pro-democracy lawmakers over a brawl in the parliament. The lawmakers have been charged of creating chaos within the legislative committee in May as they try to stop a controversial extradition bill. The pro-democracy lawmakers will be jailed for one year if convicted. The police has also ordered four other lawmakers to attend a police station. The extradition bill ignited mass protests across the territory. The bill allows extraditions of Hong Kong citizens to mainland China. More stories to follow right after a short break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. In Ukraine, government forces and the Russian-backed separatists have restarted withdrawal from the eastern Donbass region. Ukraine says the troop pulled back in the village of Petriske as part of confidence-building measures under Minsk agreements. Kiev said it has now fulfilled all the necessary conditions for a peace summit with Russia to take place. Earlier this week, the sides deferred the ongoing troop pullback in the war-torn eastern Ukraine. The United Nations top court has said it has jurisdiction to hear a lawsuit filed by Ukraine against Russia for supporting a pro-Russian separatist. Presiding Judge Abdul Kavi Yusuf said conditions had been met for the case to be heard in full. In a hearing at the International Court of Justice in June, Moscow asked judges to dismiss the suit. Moscow said Kiev was using it as a pretext for a ruling on the legality of Russia's 2014 annexation of Crimea. Russian forces seized Ukraine's Crimea Peninsula in 2014, shortly after a pro-Russian president was toppled in a popular uprising. Moscow then organized a referendum and annexed the territory. In Spain, people have geared up to exercise their right to vote in the country's fourth general election in four years. Spain has been gripped in a political impasse following an inconclusive April election. Political parties wrapped up their campaign ahead of Sunday's general election. Strict security has been put in place for the polls. Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez raised alarm over the far right of Vox Party's aggressive policies. He warned that the party would drag the country back to the dark days of Franco's dictatorship. Recent surveys suggest a surge in Vox Party's support since the protest erupted in Catalonia. 
European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen said North Macedonia and Albania have made good efforts to secure EU membership. Leyen was speaking after talks with Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel in Berlin. In her comments, Merkel said the two countries continue to have a prospect of a membership. France's President Emmanuel Macron has vetoed further expansion of the EU at a recent Brussels summit. The decision effectively dashed the two countries' hopes of making a rapid progress on accession. Brazil's former president, Luiz Inácio Lula de Silva, has been freed from prison after his release was ordered by a judge. De Silva served a year and a half behind bars on charges of corruption. The former president pumped his fist in victory as he exited the federal police headquarters in the southern city of Curitiba. He was quickly surrounded by hundreds of supporters and members of his workers' party who waved red flags. In an address, De Silva vowed to keep fighting for poor people and denounced the economic policies of the current president, Jair Bolsonaro. I have a desire to prove that this country can be much better when it has a government that doesn't lie as much on Twitter as Bolsonaro does. De Silva has called for a rally today as the Meta Workers Union on the outskirts of Sao Paulo to start his national tour. Now moving on, five police officers have been killed in an ambush near Oaxaca State in southern Mexico. Authorities say two others have been injured in the attack during a regular patrol. In a tweet, Oaxaca Governor Alejandro Murat condemned the incident and ordered an investigation. The drug violence has multiplied in recent years in Oaxaca. Earlier, the mayor of San Jose, Estenesia Grande, and a state official were killed in an armed attack. In Chile, protesters have clashed with the police again on the streets of San Diego. The peaceful rally turned violent after demonstrators set fire to a university building and ransacked a church. Five crews said they are facing trouble in reaching the blaze because of a large number of demonstrators blocking the way. The protesters sparked over a hike in Metro fears unraveled into violent rights, looting and arson. Protesters are demanding an end to social injustices and economic inequality. Prosecutors are investigating more than 800 allegations of abuse, including rape and torture by security forces during demonstrations. UN Human Rights and Amnesty International has sent a fact-finding mission to Chile to interview alleged victims. As the cyclone Bulbul approaching the Bay of Bengal, Bangladeshi and Indian authorities have ordered nearly 500,000 people to flee coastal villages and islands. Indian authorities have also issued an alert after heavy rains lashed several parts of eastern Indian state of Orissa. The Kolkata airport has suspended operations till Sunday morning. Bangladesh authorities said Mongla and Chittagong seaports are on high alert. Cyclone Bulbul is expected to make landfall near the world's largest mangrove forest, Sundarbans. In Australia, three people have been killed in bushfires sweeping near Glenines, north of Sydney. Authorities say 30 others have been injured and seven pillars still missing in the deadly fires. They said high winds and hot weather triggered the bushfires in the countryside of New South Wales. Executive Director of Operations Rob Rogers said more than a thousand firefighters and 70 helicopters are battling blazes. The fires have destroyed more than 100 homes and thousands of residents are trapped in their homes. Australia's Prime Minister Scott Morrison says the fires are expected to expand and cause more damage. These fires have already claimed two lives that have been confirmed and as the Premier said we're expecting worse news as the day unfolds. There have been hundreds of properties that have been destroyed, homes that have been destroyed and as we get access to further areas that have been cut off we're expecting worse news again. The Prime Minister has declared emergency in New South Wales and Queensland advising people to take precautionary measures. And I'm moving on. Pakistanis are paying tribute to their national poet, Allama Muhammad Iqbal, on his 142nd birth anniversary. Iqbal authored 
many books uh, through which he ignited the fervor of freedom in Muslims' youth. A contingent of Pakistani took charge of the guard duties in a ceremony at Iqbal's mausoleum in Lahore. Pakistani Air Force released a special documentary to pay tribute to the great thinker who conceived the idea of Pakistan. Germany is celebrating reunification and democracy on the 30th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. Berliners and visitors from around the world have gathered to celebrate the festival of freedom peacefully and exuberantly. What in this report? Large projections with historical pictures of the Berlin Wall are displayed across the city. The celebrations of reunification anniversary feature concerts lectures, contemporary witness talks, and poetry slams. We artists painted these pictures between the end of January and September about what happened then, and how people are really interested in seeing these pictures. On 9th November 1989, euphoric Germans clambered on the top of the wall, smashing it with hammers to break it up. Families friends and neighbors separated into West and East Berlin were finally reunited after 28 years. But before that, 138 people trying to escape to the West lost their lives. And, uh, this then my mother came. She also came over the yard. She was a bit nervous. She was already older than 50 and she didn't recognize me, thank God. That would have been romantic. Since then, the site has become an export hit. Not only segments of the broken wall have been sent off around the world as state gifts, but also new technologies like virtual reality headset have allowed people to experience the menace of the toppling of the hated wall. A tunnel under the Berlin Wall. The most interesting part for me was to see how deep the tunnel. I had never imagined that the tunnel was so narrow and long. The tunnel also Today, Berlin is known as a place of freedom, opportunity, and individuality. For its people, the fall of the wall three decades ago was the best day of their lives. In Australia, caretakers at a veterinary centre are looking after koala bears burned in wildfires that recently swept through New South Wales. Hundreds of koalas were lost in the places near the town of Port Macquarie in the state's north. This report has more on how the survivors are faring. Nurses at Port Macquarie Koala Hospital feed the burnt animals with formula and leaves in the intensive care unit. The patients, Paul and Anwen, have bandaged paws, burnt noses and singed fur. It's tough. They, are, they look terrible, the poor little things. They're black, obviously. Um, they're, some of them are in a lot of pain. Um, the ones that we're really hopeful for, of course, are the ones that are um, taking food. Two-thirds of the koala population at Lake Innes Nature Reserve died a week ago after a lightning strike ignited a fire. Another fire sparked in the reserve on Thursday, threatening the remaining koalas. Koala Conservation President Sue Ashton says 350 of the reserve's 600 koalas died in the bush fire. Some of the temperatures have gone up to 800 degrees and at that heat, the koalas will just simply burn and disintegrate. Caretakers hope the survivors in the reserve can cope until help arrives. NASA has unveiled its first all-electric experimental aircraft in the California desert. Adapted from Italian-made model, the X57 Maxwell has been under development since 2015 and will take a year to test its first flight. More in this report. After attaching two of the 14 electric motors powered by specially designed batteries, NASA deemed that Maxwell is ready for its first public preview. This is the latest aircraft the National Aeronautics and Space Administration has developed over many decades. A newly built simulator allows engineers and pilots to get the feel of the finished version of the AX-57. 
it's it's very exciting for us. So I know for me and Tim Williams, the other pilot, it's going to be flying it. For Armstrong to be getting back into the crewed X, X plane work is, is very exciting for us. NASA X-57 venture includes standards for airworthiness, safety, as well as for energy efficiency and noise. So there's a number of interesting new markets for electric airplanes. The, the first one's called urban air mobility, and there's many, many companies trying to get into this, this, this area. So if you, if you think of like an air taxi, imagine a taxi, but in 3D, a, a vehicle that can lift off the ground and take you around a big city, say 20 to 50 to 100 miles. One challenge is improving battery technology to store more energy. Due to limitations, the aircraft is envisioned for use in short-haul flights as a commuter plan. More stories to follow right after a short break. Stay tuned with Industries. Chinese online retailer Titan Alibaba is reportedly planning to raise up to $15 billion in Hong Kong initial public offering. The public offering would take place at a pivotal moment for Hong Kong's future as the city has been rocked by months of protests. The company will prior seek approval from Hong Kong's listing committee next week. If realized, the transaction would be the world's biggest ever cross-border secondary listing. Alibaba currently holds the crown for the world's biggest initial public offering for its $25 billion float in New York in 2014. There was no immediate comment from the firm. China's producer prices fell the most in more than three years in October as the manufacturing sector weakened on the declining demand. The National Bureau of Statistics says the producer price index fell 1.6% year-on-year, the steepest decline since July 2016. Economists say weekend a weakened a consumer demand reflects the impact of China's trade war with the U.S. In contrast, China's consumer prices rose by a higher than expected 3.8% in October. The consumer price index has been driven up by a meat shortage, but core inflation, which excludes food and energy prices, was recorded at a modest 1.5%. Many economists say China's rising consumer price index may become a concern for policymakers looking to stimulate demand. Chinese ambassador to Pakistan Yao Jing says Beijing is going to establish 19 factories in Gavada to create jobs for Balochistan youth. Talking to media, Jing said China seeks to contribute to overall development of Balochistan's mining, agriculture and water sectors. Jing said the Chinese consulate is easing the visa procedure for the businessman community. He said CPAC will change economic fortune of not only Balochistan but also Afghanistan and Central Asia with all projects going through Pakistan. The envoy said 50 vocational centers are being established for enhancing skills of young generation to the province. And now the weather situation from around the globe. That's all for now. For the latest updates, you can follow us on social media at Industry News.